Hello everybody and uh, welcome uh, to developing your first uh, IoT application. Uh, I am Basim Bushra, I'm a CEO of Spine Sense Labs uh, and I'm also a member of uh, the IoT uh, Egypt Forum. I'm a committee, a steering committee member. Uh, I would like to welcome you to this session which would be a hands-on uh, technical session uh, this is meant for those who would like to learn how to develop their uh, IoT applications uh, this is very useful for solution architects uh, it's very useful for uh, application developers IoT application developers in general uh, web application developers uh, business people even who would like to uh, see and learn how these things are uh, how the IoT applications uh, are being developed uh, okay, uh, a quick uh, info about the uh, SpineSense Labs. Uh, it is uh, an Egyptian company, a joint stock Egyptian company. Uh, has been uh, created more than three years, three years and a half. Uh, over this journey, we have got uh, many rewards. Uh, I would say uh, the recent one uh, for those are. Uh, uh, the ones we got in, in uh, 2017, uh, specifically as uh, the Best Technology Enterprise Award, which has been uh, delivered to us uh, through His Excellency as a Minister of uh, Communication and ICT, uh, with the head of uh, ETIDA, uh, Ms. Asma. Okay, uh, let's uh, jump into the IoT applications. IoT applications are categorized into uh, five. Uh, main categories. We call them uh, the five pillars of the IoT applications. Uh, those are uh, home consumer uh, applications, uh, transport and mobility applications, uh, health and body management applications, uh, building infrastructure uh, management applications, and uh, industrial and smart cities uh, applications. Uh, on the right side, uh, the smart cities are uh, and the industries. This is where most of the money of the IoT applications will come in. Uh, on the other side, uh, the consumer home applications would have uh, most of uh, the devices. However, uh, it's not going to be generating most of the money. Uh, the health is going to be the least number uh, of devices because of certification process, a very long uh, process for certification and lo lots of R&D uh, cost for developing such applications. These applications require a, a huge number of people. Uh, if we're talking about 50 billion connected devices, then approximately we're talking about uh, 50 uh, million applications, if we say for each 1,000 devices, uh, only one application would be there, then we're also talking about uh, 250 million software-related jobs, assuming that five software uh, jobs are needed for every uh, application. Uh, if this means anything, it means uh, this is very important, and it is also means uh, there, is, there will be lots of money here, and it means uh, we should find a way to make the application development for IoT uh, much simpler and easier, for non-programmers to be able to create applications, and for programmers to be able to create much more powerful applications. So uh, it, it's uh, very important for both uh, sides. Uh, why we are saying uh, non-programmers to learn? Because the number of programmers, the number of software application developers needed would be really huge. So for uh, uh, this uh, type of applications to fly, uh, we have to find ways to make it uh, easier for non-programmers to program that. Okay, uh, let's move on. Uh, I asked you uh, uh, to preview, uh, review some of uh, one of my previous sessions as an introductory for this one, specifically the IoT applications uh, impact on our life and business. I'll, I'll uh, summarize those in uh, or five minutes here. So uh, we have to have uh, some basic uh, information, some basic background. We need to understand that uh, how IoT uh, devices will be communicating data to 
the IoT applications on the cloud. Uh, meaning, uh, understanding the, the IoT value chain. So let's summarize it here. The IoT value chain uh, starts by devices. Uh, those would be uh, sitting at home devices or uh, industrial devices like smart meters, for example, or meters in any manufacturer or even uh, wearable uh, devices uh, that uh, end users will, will wear to get information from their body. Uh, for understanding the, the IoT value chain, we will compare the, the mobile world with uh, the IoT world. We understand the IoT world very well uh, uh, and consumers and end users all understand the mobile world very well. So let's compare it to make sure that we uh, know the details of each. Uh, if you're sitting at home and using your mobile phone uh, on a Wi-Fi network at home, uh, then your mobile phone is the device and the wireless network you, you are using at home is the Wi-Fi. Uh, data flies from your mobile phone uh, over the Wi-Fi to your wireless gateway at home, which sometimes called wireless access point, sometimes called uh, wireless router. Uh, on the other side of the world, which is the IoT devices, Devices would be uh, these ones, exactly like uh, your phone. They should also use uh, a wireless technology, uh, similar to the Wi-Fi you are using in a way or another at home, but it's a different type of technology that uh, gives uh, uh, other facilities to the devices. Uh, those would be LoRa, uh, Zigbee, and Z-Wave. Those are the most famous ones. Uh, the most important functionality of those is transferring the data wirelessly from the devices while keeping uh, the device power, the device battery, as low as possible. Okay, then uh, if data flies from devices uh, through the wireless network to the gateway, uh, at your home there is a wireless access point. Here we're talking about uh, IoT gateways. Those are coming from different uh, manufacturers, different uh, gateway providers. Uh, when the data reaches your uh, Wi-Fi uh, router or uh, access point at home, it then flies over an ADSL or a fixed internet, uh, sometimes 3G, 4G, to the cloud. And then uh, on the cloud, there is an application server uh, collecting the data. Think of WhatsApp, for example. Then if you're sending data from your device, which is mobile phone, uh, you're using WhatsApp to send data from your device to someone else, and the data flies from your device to the over the Wi-Fi to your access point, uh, over the fixed internet or 3G to reach WhatsApp, and then WhatsApp decides that this data has to go to someone else. Then it goes in the back direction, searching for the end user, and then it delivers it to the end user in the reverse direction. Similar to this, uh, devices, IoT devices, will send data over a wireless access technology, one of the alternatives, and then uh, data goes through the gateway to reach the internet over a carrier network. This might be fixed 3G or even satellite or Sigfox, uh, the famous Sigfox uh, network operators, now in, in 34 countries, and then the first uh, Thing on the internet that will receive the data is uh, residing, uh, residing on the cloud, which is master of things or uh, another application enablement platform. So an application enablement platform on the cloud is the first interaction point. And then applications would be running on top of these platforms to decide what would happen to the data received from the devices. Uh, what these uh, applications will decide depending on the type of, of the application. Application enablement platforms, as said, is the most uh, important starting point on the cloud. So if we will summarize here, we need to find a way to get a device today to send data from a device and then use a wireless technology to carry data to the cloud to interact with uh, an application enablement platform. Three main components, devices, wireless technology, and application enablement platform where our application 
uh, will be resident. That's what we will develop today, an application running on top of an application enablement platform. Okay, so let's go a little bit of details. If we will pick up a device, what we should do, if we were developing an IoT application from scratch, we need to find a prototyping board. Uh, it's a prototyping uh, hardware or uh, a way to prototype our device. Uh, after we develop our prototype using one of the prototyping boards or prototyping tools uh, and see that okay this is fine this is nice this is okay then we throw this out and then we start developing the real IoT device. Uh, this requires uh, one of the real-time operating systems just uh, an example Contiki, Free Artos, Thrive, Tiny there are many of those and uh, those companies who develop these embedded devices uh, usually it turns to be a production device then the production device uh, as an example of companies producing the IoT devices today uh, I would say Libelium, Eurotech, Telet and Nyanzi okay so people have to start with a, a prototyping board then uh, there is a wireless technology uh, we uh, briefly mentioned uh, Zigbee and Z-Wave and LoRa, but there are really many alternatives. We will skip that for now. Then the gateway providers, I said, uh, those are the most famous ones. Uh, Cisco, I, I would say, is uh, the most appreciated here uh, in, in, in the world of gateways, uh, at least for now. Uh, then uh, carrier networks, alternative carrier networks, this could be GPRS 3G, 4G, uh, or alternatively a Sigfox network, a satellite network, or uh, someone else playing the role of a carrier network. Uh, we have talked, uh, I would say in the previous session, uh, a lot about those, so we will skip this one. Uh, then uh, the application enablement platforms will receive the data. There are various alternatives here. Uh, we will have a dedicated session how to select the proper application enablement platform, but for today, we're going to use a master of things because it's uh, easy and uh, quick uh, to learn and still uh, very powerful for you to develop applications. Uh, we will dedicate a session for uh, what you should expect from an application enabling platform, the main functionalities, what should be there, and how to pick up the right one. Uh, after that, if the application is running for many years, and you have developed it and it's working properly, then it's collecting a lot of data over years, then uh, you need to make use of those collected data where uh, analytics and big data uh, becomes important. So those are other platforms that will analyze historical data uh, to bring you much more value from these data that has been collected over many years. Okay. The last, uh, I would say, important uh, item in the value chain is the device and remote gateway management. These are also a different type of platforms. They are uh, meant to be used to configure uh, remotely configure the devices, remotely configure the gateways. Uh, we also talked a little bit about that in, in the value chain. And uh, someone will provide the end-to-end -end, uh, uh, solution. Those are usually uh, referred to as system integrators, uh, system integration companies. So if we're going to develop today an IoT application, then we're going to pass through many of those. We will go through this step quickly and then think of those as uh, the three components here as the wireless technology being used and an application uh, development platforms. We will develop the application now and keep it running. Uh, later, after three years, we'll have to come here to analyze the collected data uh, or come to uh, the device and remote gateway uh, configuration. We will touch base on that as well. Okay, then let's start with uh, prototyping boards. Uh, what are the available prototyping boards? There are many, many uh, alternatives for hardware prototyping boards. 
uh, those shoes really are a very small tiny computer like what we're seeing here it has a cpu memory uh, input output interfaces sometimes uh, running a real-time operating systems as well and this would be uh, constructing the prototype of your device unfortunately these prototyping boards that we're putting here are complex to learn it takes uh, days uh, from expert uh, hardware guys maybe uh, weeks from computer science people uh, I would say months from uh, non-computer tech uh, guys uh, for it's clearly that we were not going to uh, use any of those today the, the I would say the best alternative uh, is a software prototyping board uh, unfortunately whenever you're going to use one of those you're just putting the prototype of your device uh, and if you go into this with the hardware prototyping boards you will keep thinking of the device as the whole IoT application which is not uh, as mentioned in this slide this is only the starting point building your prototype if you start with one of those complex prototyping boards you will keep thinking here and maybe you will end up here uh, this is an embedded systems world it's not the IoT world the IoT world is the whole seven uh, components here so uh, don't put yourself in, in this uh, uh, I would say corner don't corner yourself in the device world think of the device as the starting point you have to have the right device uh, but don't live inside the device the, the world is much bigger okay then uh, which prototyping board we're going to use we're going to use uh, a software prototyping board uh, that will turn your mobile phone into uh, a prototyping board your smartphone uh, already has many sensors it has uh, memory in it it has an operating system uh, it's a very powerful device so we will use today uh, master of things iot kit uh, you can find this on the play store so please start downloading uh, master of things iot kit uh, search for it on the play store use master of things as one word space iot space kit Uh, this board will give you an uh, accelerometer that's available on every smartphone uh, you will have uh, a sensor with a signal strength you also have a uh, gps location uh, most of the phones also has a light intensity sensor uh, all of the smartphones has a touch screen with a sensor that will sense where did you touch your screen in which x and y location uh, it also includes a, a pedometer that will count your steps uh, most of the smartphones uh, I would say all of them have a camera uh, so you have a scanner here as well uh, that can scan uh, barcodes uh, QR codes and convert them to numbers so these are the basic sensors available in every smartphone so if you go and use master of things IoT kit you're actually using your phone as an IoT uh, prototyping board uh, let's understand more of the applications when you run the application you can see that uh, some of the devices uh, like the accelerometer sensor for example has a check mark beside it. then uh, if this is green check mark then it means you have configured uh, the IoT kit to collect data from, an acceler from your accelerometer in your phone and send it back to the application enablement platform uh, and this will use a Wi-Fi uh, or a 3G uh, network available so uh, these are the wireless technologies that we will use today Wi-Fi, uh, GPS, 3G, 4G uh, if you have this mark beside uh, one of the sensors in the board this means uh, you have configured it not to collect the data uh, not to send it to the platform not to send it to outside of the device so make sure uh, if you're going to use the accelerometer today and we're going to use it a lot that we configure it to be active and sending data to the platforms how we will do that we will go through the settings uh, menu uh, in a few uh, minutes to configure this together okay this is the first tool we said uh, you need to have 
uh, a prototyping board so that's our prototyping board for today and we're going to use the wireless technology as said uh, Wi-Fi uh, G versus 3G then we need a platform okay which platform we're going to use this is the second tool we're going to use today so we're going to use master of things uh, platform uh, mainly because it's it's very easy to use so go and register yourself an account on dev.masterofthings.com uh, master of things comes with uh, a visual development environment this is the one we're seeing here uh, it's very simple to use that's why we uh, selected it for the session today so okay uh, it's still very simple but uh, also still uh, very powerful to develop very powerful applications this is only one component of the platform uh, platforms usually should have four main components the, I would say the most important ones for the developers is uh, the development environment so go and register yourself an account on dev.masterofthings.com uh, once you register uh, please go and log in and follow my steps here so I'll now move to uh, my browser uh, and access the development environment uh, before I do this, let's have a quick look on what we uh, have here. Uh, when you log in to the development environment for Master of Things, you will get uh, on your left side uh, plugins. Those are draggable components that you can drag to your page area here to construct your page, to build your page. So you can put uh, buttons, uh, charts, uh, um, maybe timers. Uh, data tables to show data for your end users, drop down lists, uh, visualize your data from your devices on a map, uh, put a blog in the page for people to interact on the data received from your devices, uh, uh, visualize the data maybe on digital meter uh, or an analog uh, meter. Uh, the most important two plugins here are a timer plugin that will execute something on the page uh, every few seconds or minutes up to whatever you decide and the web service plugin this one can send the data to the outside world to also another uh, systems maybe crm systems maybe billing systems uh, uh, provisioning platforms whatsoever so uh, this one is very important uh, okay what else we have here uh, your application will be actually uh, constructed of many uh, pages like this one so uh, your end uh, application will have maybe an, a page for users to register a page for uh, visualizing the data and a page for uh, putting uh, help for people uh, the actual application will end up with many pages so uh, the simple the tool that you will use to create the applications pages the better uh, your applications will end up you will have to build uh, many applications uh, and every application will have many pages so uh, if you use a simple uh, tool to create your application that will make your life much easier as uh, the last and most important component we see here uh, is the properties of the plugin so if for example you selected a chart and you dragged your chart into the page here you need to tell this chart uh, where will the data come from you need also to tell the chart its size uh, the colors represented in the chart but the most important property is the data source where the data will come uh, from to this chart uh, okay so you, here you will get a list of devices and then you point out to the, the device that you'd like to visualize its data. Now uh, let's move to the browser and see uh, how this will work out. Okay, uh, this is dev.masterofthings.com and the first page you get is uh, username and password. If you have already registered, I have registered a special account for the session. Let me put my password here. And then we log in. Okay, I missed the password, so let's take it again.
Okay, now it's uh, I'm logged in and the IDE is uh, is being loaded. So this is the visual development of uh, Master of Things. As we said, the four components are available here. So uh, first thing I uh, I should do is create a new project and start building pages. Or for the sake of this session, we have created a special project for you. We called it uh, IoT. Hello world. So if you search uh, here or write your project name, if you have many projects, you can search. But uh, obviously, if this is your first time to register, you will find only one project. We have created this for you. So go and open this one. And uh, once you load this project, you find three different pages on the project. We also have created these pages for you to start. So the first thing I would ask you to do is right click on the project name and then select save as mainly to save another copy of this project for you to play with it and leave the original copy as it is. So you can go back to it whenever uh, you would like to go back to the original code. So save as will ask you for a new name of the project. I'll make it my underscore uh, IoT Hello World and then uh, say save okay so the project now is being saved with this new name so this is a new project my IoT Hello World if you try it again to open the projects you will find now you have two projects so uh, we will keep using my uh, IoT Hello World so either to open it again or just close this one and make sure this is your my IoT Hello World okay let's look at the pages we have here uh, we have created for you uh, three pages one that we will use to control uh, your devices remotely to control your iot kit your master of things iot kit on your phone and uh, one uh, will use the accelerometer from your phone another one will also use accelerometer from your phone uh, these are uh, learning applications it's not uh, real uh, applications i mean uh, when i'm saying it's not real uh, i'm saying it's not the actual applications that you will give to your end users uh, you're not going to create games even that there will be iot games uh, but your intention is not to develop a, a game so uh, today we're using those as uh, just examples okay so let's start with the bottle rotate what we need to do with this application uh, we need to create uh, a page, a web page that will show a bottle of water to the end users and we will allow the end user to control this bottle of water, to rotate it, to move it using the end user phone. That's what we will do today. So to build this image, you have to drag uh, an image uh, plugin here. And then when you drag it, you will see that the properties here, there is an image URL. So search for Google and pick up Google images and pick up the right uh, image URL uh, for the image you want and you change it here. So we picked a bottle of water image. So it becomes a bottle of water. And then uh, we want to tell users how to uh, play with this application, how to use this application. So we drag uh, a label. Uh, okay, this is the label plugin. We drag it here and uh, once you drag it, you will find that uh, There is uh, one of the properties of this plugin. So click on the plugin and see its plugin properties This is saying label plugin properties and then one of the properties would be uh, What is displayed on top of, of this label? Okay, so the, the caption uh, Property so type something here. So we type for this example, do one, two, three, four. Okay, so that what would appear here. Okay, what else we need to do for this application? We need to monitor uh, the the end user uh, accelerometer, the accelerometer in the end user phone, and based on the rotation of the phone that we will detect from the accelerometer, we will uh, move this bottle of water. Then how to tell? Uh, the application environment here is a, how to tell master of things that you would like to uh, look at the specific information from the accelerometer sensor. 
you go for the tools and then go for the sensor manager so click on the tools menu and then select the sensor manager once the sensor manager uh, management interface opens you will find a list of existing tools a list of existing sensors that we have defined for you so we have defined for you a, a group of sensors here that all are available in the iot kit uh, this is the list that you, you will see we have pre, uh, predefined it for you so please start uh, copying the accelerometer sensor so uh, on the accelerometer sensor click copy and here uh, you will get lots of information about the accelerometer sensor so we, this is a template that we are copying so we're copying from this, uh, the accelerometer template uh, the information. Uh, we will notice that uh, the sensor readings uh, sent from the accelerometer I are uh, XYZ acceleration and other readings. You can change this to make it uh, with your name. So put your name here as an identifier. Uh, also the sensor code, you can change this to something that would identify your device among other devices. So maybe your mobile number, maybe uh, your name or any uh, set of codes that you uh, expect. I would say IoT session uh, code. And for this one, I will make it IoT session accelerometer. Okay. Leave everything uh, as the default. Uh, we will talk about this later. So leave all the settings as default and say next step. Uh, it tells you, okay, you have not changed uh, any readings or added any readings to this uh, device, which is fine. Uh, next step. So leave everything here as default as well. Next step. And then it will ask you for uh, how much you expect the accelerometer values would be uh, sent. So leave it also as a default and then say copy sensor on this screen this is a very important one please notice the sensor id this is the id of your device this is how master of things platform will identify this device we just have created we will take this number and configure it in the iot kit on the mobile phone so now we're going to switch back to the master of things iot kit and use this number to tell the kit that this is your uh, device ID as defined on Master of Things. So let's go for uh, the slides again and then see how we were going to do that. Okay, now if you open uh, your uh, Master of Things IoT kit on your phone, uh, I assume now you have already downloaded it from the Google Play Store and you have uh, entered uh, a mobile number or a string uh, identifying your identity as uh the id of of this iot kit uh, once you install it and you start it it will ask you to register and ask you for uh, an identification this can be a mobile number it can be a, a username unique for you anything that you believe would be unique for your own device mobile number would be uh, the best effect okay so uh, once you open it the main screen uh, you will notice here uh, uh, it has uh, a listing of all the sensors available uh, for the kit. Uh, these sensors will depend on uh, your phone. So if your phone uh, has a camera, then you can use the camera. Uh, if this is a smartphone, it has a camera and it has an accelerometer for sure. Uh, some of the phones will have temperature sensors. Some of the phones will have uh, pressure sensors. Uh, so depending on your phone but the list that we're showing here are uh, the ones available on all the smartphones okay so uh, for the IoT kit uh, of this version that's available now on the, on the Play Store uh, it will give you access to the accelerometer to the battery to signal strengths and others the most important thing you should notice here in the main screen that it tells you that okay we're connected to the MQTT broker a broker is a functionality of the platform uh, that will uh, allow your device to send and receive data over MQTT application protocol. 
uh, we will talk about this uh, in details uh, in later sessions but for now make sure it is uh, connected this means your device is able to send and receive data over MQTT broker think of it like uh, the mail server uh, MQTT is a server that is residing to allow devices to send data to each other so uh, this device which is IoT kit will be sending and receiving data over uh, MQTT uh, broker uh, as I said uh, consider it just an email server uh, think of it like that for now okay so uh, make sure it is connected and then click on the settings once you click on the settings you get this screen uh, if you scroll up and down uh, you will need you notice here uh, the number you have put as your registration your mobile number or uh, your unique uh, username uh, this can be even an email whatever something that would be unique for your own device here uh, and then uh, make sure you click on the physical sensors once you click on the physical sensors you get the details of the sensors here so you have a drop down list of all the sensors available supported by this kit so uh, click on the accelerometer select the accelerometer then uh, click on uh, send readings this is your activating the sensor to send the data to the outside world and after that put a sensor id here what is the id this is the id we have got from master of things when we copied the accelerometer sensor remember that i told you uh, the id is very important so put this id here okay let's go for the browser and see what was the id uh, this is the sensor id so we take it and uh, put it here after we activate the sending uh, reading uh, once you activate this this will be active put a number here and then you will find other settings like sending reading uh, uh, every duration and the duration here is in milliseconds so make it uh, 5000 milliseconds this means it is every five seconds send the value of the accelerometer to the server leave the rest uh, of the configurations as per the default and scroll down and select save don't forget to say save otherwise the changes you have done here are not saved okay now uh, your device uh, should be connected to the internet over your Wi-Fi or 3G make sure that the connection is working your wireless connection is working and now you have configured it to send the data to a specific sensor let's go back uh, to the browser and see uh, what we will do uh, on master of things there okay so now uh, we are in the browser window uh, you opened the sensor management interface and you got this sensor and you configured it in your uh, IoT kit let's go back to master of things uh, visual development environment in the visual development environment here you need to tell it okay check my accelerometer in my device which is the IoT kit on your phone uh, every period of time and get the value and upon this value start rotating uh, this bottle how we will do that we need to take a timer and put it in the page uh, and tell this timer to check the data uh, coming from the accelerometer sensor every period of time so we have done this for you already so if you click on the page plugins you will notice that there is a label plugin uh, that's where we put the text to illustrate how this example will work uh, and there is also a, a bottle plugin which is the image uh, we called it we changed its name from an image plugin to a bottle so you can do that as well uh, you will find it's already uh, named like that we have did this for you again for the plugin list you will notice that there is an accelerometer timer here so uh, if you click on this one uh, you will not be able to see it here but you will see its properties on this right side hand here because we have uh, made it hidden so one of the properties is to make it visible or invisible 
uh, the default is visible uh, and for sure you don't want your uh, end users to see this timer plugin so make it invisible and uh, the rest of the properties uh, this is the duration in milliseconds uh, so this timer will work every 100 milliseconds meaning it will work in 10 times per second and this is uh, recurrence so it will keep doing that forever and it is active so uh, it is working now so okay leave these properties uh, as we did it for you i just explained it to make sure that you uh, you know what does it mean uh, the most important here when you click on a plugin and select it is to go and check what would happen with this plugin so there is a list of events here if this is a button there is a click there is a double click if it's a label the same all the plugins have click double click mouse over but specifically for the timer plugin, it has a timer tick. And this is the most important uh, event that we would like to write our code here. So we have written this code for you. Uh, it is uh, 36 uh, lines of code. The first line here, it tells which sensor we are uh, talking about. So again, the same sensor ID we got here should be in your IoT kit and should be here in the first line of the timer. So change that to your uh, device ID now. Okay, uh, I put mine that I just created now. Uh, okay, uh, I'll use this number. So uh, it was 2536. And I'll make sure it is in my IoT kit. So I go for my IoT kit settings. Like what we have here. I'll go for the settings. I'll scroll down to the physical sensors. And then activate the accelerometer and put the same number. 2000. Okay, 2536, 2536, I put it in my kit, 2536. Okay, I just say save. In my IoT kit. Okay, now it tells me it is saved. Then I'll go back, back again to the home page. So now uh, I have this screen active on my mobile phone. I'll go back to the browser, to the development environment. Just make sure that the number is there. And now I say save. Okay, so I save my application. And now my application will check for this sensor, for the accelerometer timer every 100 milliseconds so 10 times per second and uh, what would happen after that it will actually call this uh, function which is move bottle uh, this is a javascript function you can write a standard javascript here this is a standard javascript so as uh, a move bottle will take the accelerometer value uh, take the x y z reading from the accelerometer and the accelerometer is actually sending the acceleration force exerted on my mobile phone so it takes the acceleration x y z direction and this formula converts uh, the value of x y z acceleration to polar coordinates which is a rotation of uh, 360 degrees to be able to rotate the plugin uh, called a uh, bottle Okay, and we'll also display the value of the accelerometer, the angle calculated in a label plugin, which is hidden for you for debugging purposes if you'd like to look at this. So, what would happen if I say save? So, my project is saved. If I run this page now, I would assume and expect the page keeps monitoring my accelerometer on my mobile phone and the uh, Whenever the accelerometer value on mobile, my mobile phone it changes, uh, it keeps sending the data. 
so whenever I move my device uh, my device which is my phone now running the IOT kit uh, I will notice that uh, the bottle is uh, moving and, and following uh, uh, my rotations okay uh, let me uh, keep playing a little bit here and please do this as well so and please notice that your device is sending one accelerometer reading every five uh, seconds uh, this means uh, the page uh, even that the page will detect the movements uh, every 100 milliseconds but your device is actually sending it uh, once every five seconds so uh, okay uh, you will notice some delay the delay is coming from uh, two sources uh, one source is uh, the five seconds configuration and the other sa the delay is coming from the network itself so if your uh, wireless network is uh, slow or if your uh, uh, internet connection to your browser on your laptop here is uh, slow then you will notice that the bottle is moving it is rotating but it is just following uh, what you have have done with your mobile phone so move your phone slowly to be able to see uh, the changes again if there is a delay it's coming from your wireless network or coming from your internet uh, connection okay now i'll stop uh, my device and i'll go back to the application to illustrate it uh, for you i'll close this window just to make sure that you understand it well okay uh, what do we have in our page a label okay that's the label plugin an image plugin and then we selected the url for the bottle and the most important plugin we have used here is the timer plugin we have moved it from here dragged it to the page and then we made it uh, visible or invisible. Okay, now I'm controlling the visible and the invisible of the image plugin. But uh, to go for the accelerometer, because it is invisible, you get it from the plugin, uh, the plugins uh, list in the page. So here you will have the accelerometer timer. Uh, if you make it visible, you will be able to see it. Uh, you don't want your end users to see that, so you will hide it and make it invisible. And the most important is the code, uh, the JavaScript code that will be executed by this timer. So if you click on this, you will notice the code starts with a sensor ID. That is the ID of your device. And in this example, we have uh, copied this uh, sensor from another sensor that has been defined for you previously in the sensor management interface and once you do this if i click home again here in the sensor management interface you will get a list of your devices uh, i copied one of those and i called it iot session accelerometer so this is the sensor i have created and it has this number uh, as an id for the identifier for this sensor on the platform because the platform is handling many many uh, devices thousands of devices so this is the device we just created we will use this number uh, in the application page here and then uh, the application page will do a get latest value of a sensor so this function is a built-in function in the platform uh, you ask the platform to get me the latest value of this sensor which is the sensor uh, that we have used in our IoT uh, kit device on our phone the same device so you ask it for latest value of this okay uh, this is an accelerometer so the value comes in and it is being passed 
uh, to a callback function called move button for those guys who uh, know uh, JavaScript programming they will understand what's a, a callback function it's actually a, a, a function that will be called after the value comes in so you say get latest value of a sensor and when you get the value pass it to the move bottle function okay so the move bottle function is defined below here uh, in this line and the function uh, in this few number of lines uh, tells okay you got the accelerometer value here uh, take xyz from it uh, if it is new take it uh, because the capture time uh, of the data coming from the device is very important we said that there is a delay that will happen in the network because networks are not fast as we think uh, data will be traveling from your device over the internet will take many routes and then some packets will arrive before others network guys will understand that so you need to check the capture time uh, if it's a new data uh, then the recent value take it and calculate the rotation angle of the phone once you figured out the rotation angle of the phone rotate the bottle plugin with uh, the rotation angle by changing uh, the value of the rotate angle property of that plugin exactly as if you do this by hand if you go here you will find that there is a rotation angle property here where is that? rotate yeah, this one if you change it to 45 for example you will notice that, uh, that the image plugin is rotated by 45 degrees so uh, if you make it 60 then it will change like that. okay, so we want to change this to the value of the angle of your phone based on the accelerometer of your phone this is why in the accelerometer timer code here once it calculates the angle it sets the plugin parameter value for the bottle plugin uh, it changes the rotate image property to the calculated rotation angle and then it tells the platform okay redraw uh, this uh, image plugin again with this value so that's what happens automatically every 100 milliseconds according to the timer configurations uh, that we have here okay if you go for the timer accelerometer timer you will notice that we made it 100 milliseconds so this page when we run it It keeps monitoring your accelerometer timer and keeps it changing the rotation angle uh, of the image plugin, the bottle image plugin, according to the rotation angle of your phone. Now we have finished uh, our session. Uh, hopefully uh, you understand it now. Uh, hopefully it is clear for you. Uh, keep playing with uh, the accelerometer. Uh, from the accelerometer you can do an application page that monitors your baby uh, in the bed so uh, you can leave a phone in the for example you can leave a phone in the baby bed and where every uh, movement in the bed if the if the baby moves the bed uh, with any small mo movement uh, you get your accelerometer moving you can also use the accelerometer to monitor vibrations in a bridge, for example, uh, or uh, put the accelerometer uh, in a table in, in your home. If someone passes by the table or put something on the table, your accelerometer will vibrate. Uh, any small vibration will be taken and sent to the platform. And then you can see that uh, your table has been touched or moved. This can be uh, very useful for many applications. Uh, the number of applications for the accelerometer are tremendous uh, you can think of many just jumping in, in my head now maybe uh, if there is an accelerometer in your car you can monitor the car stability uh, you can monitor some of the spare parts uh, by monitoring the vibrations happening in the car uh, 
just one uh, sensor from your IoT kit, which is the accelerometer. Uh, you can use it to build many applications. Uh, imagine what would happen if this IoT kit supports 20 sensors in, in your phone. Uh, depending on your phone, you can have uh, your IoT kit to do uh, marvelous things. Uh, thanks for uh, your time. Uh, I would say uh, now there's uh, time for questions and answers. Uh, I see some questions coming in uh, to me. Uh, the, the question is uh, about security. What about security of, of this application? Okay, what we have just built now is a very basic application. It's meant for learning purposes. Security is very, very important. Uh, you will notice in uh, the platform here, uh, when we copied the sensors, there has been uh, what is called driver ID. Uh, and this driver ID has to be defined for you by uh, your administrator it has a driver ID and password uh, for the IOT kit for this learning purposes we made it uh, simple and straightforward one driver ID that's not the case in the real world in the real world there is a driver ID uh, and password for every device uh, also data is uh, sent uh, from the device to the platform uh, encrypted with AES 128 encryption protocol uh, that's a fast, quick uh, encryption protocol. It is a synchronous one. Uh, uh, the best about it is uh, being a quick uh, to, to transform the data, and it's a very uh, a quick to calculate the encryption uh, key here uh, because devices are usually limited devices. Uh, one other factor is uh, about the IoT kit uh, itself, even that it's, a it's meant to be uh, a prototyping board, but you still also have in the configuration if you would allow a remote uh, configuration or not. Uh, before I leave the session, uh, I just remember that I didn't uh, tell you more about the IoT kit control page. Uh, this page actually controls your IoT kit uh, if you allowed a remote configuration for your device. So if you run this page, uh, because I promised you to touch base on the remote configuration, uh, this page, if you used uh, you, your phone identifier number here, this, uh, as, you, as I said before, this can be your phone number, can be your email address, whatever you have used in the registration of your IoT kit uh, when you installed it. And then you can say, okay, turn the flash on and uh, press publish then the platform will tell you okay I published this command of turning the flash on using MQTT protocol to reach your device and you should see your uh, device flash turn it on if you have the right identifier here uh, you can also control the brightness you can control the vibration you can make your device play sounds uh, by uh, sending the right uh, command here okay uh, let's move on to uh, some questions again. Uh, one question is, uh, is this IoT kit uh, free for use outside this learning session? Yes, it is. Uh, the same as the platform as well. Uh, you can use your registered account here uh, for the platform uh, for free uh, forever, as long as this is for your personal use. Uh, it also has a limitation that it would be uh, only one developer working per account so uh, if you're a corporate organization and you want uh, to share the same project among the many developers uh, you have to get your uh, dedicated uh, corporate account here but your personal account is free for use for, for lifetime uh, uh, what else uh, there is a limitation here also if you go for uh, the data source property uh, of any plugin, if this is a chart, for example, uh, you will notice that you see all devices from all users uh, uh, available on this uh, free trial uh, accounts. Uh, in the real uh, situation, you can only see your devices, and nobody else can be can can have access to your devices. Even that the devices' names are listed here. Uh, other devices from other people, but you cannot really get the device data. We're just showing the device name uh, to let the people know that you have a device registered here and it is working, but they cannot get uh, their data. Again, we're trying to push you to get your dedicated account, but your personal account 
is totally yours. Nobody else can see the data from your device. Nobody else can see the data uh, from your project. Uh, uh, your project is only limited for uh, one developer, but as number uh, as many end users as you like. Uh, all end users have to register also and get an account. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, that is the end of the session. I hope uh, you have uh, enjoyed it. Uh, and if you need any, uh, if you have any question or uh, anything else, please uh, come back to us uh, on info at spinesenselabs.com or directly on the page uh, spinesenselabs.com. You can still post uh, questions to the IoT, Egypt IoT forum. Uh, being a committee member there, I'm always welcoming questions from other members in, in the forum. So you're always welcome and thank you.